and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to explore double ended crochet hooks. Today we are going to explore the world of crow hooking. It's also called a crow hook. It's also called crow knitting. So this is, particular concept is really interesting. You will see these kinds of, uh, they're very kind of hard to find, but you will see double ended crochet hooks just like so. You do in actual fact use both sides of the hook. You will also see another version off like this one here and it will have the plastic or it could be metal and the uh, needles are attached together permanently just like so. So this is for doing afghan work because when you see the concept what's going to happen is that your afghan is going to gather up onto your crochet hooks, gather onto this here and then onto the other side as well. And when you see this concept working you'll see that you're working from both sides at any one point of this project. So let's uh, review the project. Why would we do this in the first place? I'll show you a good reason right now. So why would you use a double ended crochet hook versus a regular one? The basic answer is that this does look like it's knitting does it? That's why it's probably called crow knitting or a crow hook and basically this is what we have. One side predominantly looks one color and the other one predominantly looks like the other. So this is a really neat idea for an afghan for example. Say you want two sides of an afghan to look a bit different from each other. Well a lot different. This side of the afghan would be looking more white with a bit of red and then this one would be red with the speckle of white. So it's just a really interesting concept. This kind of concept is really tight. Um, excellent for dishcloths. Excellent uh, just generally overall and today I'm going to show you how to do this from start to finish. Okay let's start off with our yarn. We're using Red Heart with Love today. Those are the colors that you saw on screen. Let's create a slip knot and I'm only going to create a sampling of just a small uh, piece for you here. So we're just going to put it onto our hook and we're going to crochet as normal in the very beginning. So for example I want to do a chain right now. So this never counts as one. I'm just going to do ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So you would start off your chain just properly and now let's begin to the, do the second part. So what we want to do is that we want to pick up the, the stitches on the back end. So you'll see the chain just like so. You will probably see it from the point of view of like this. And so what I would strongly recommend is just turn that over and just see the back spine, the loops that are popping up. Just go in just like though this is very much like Tunisian. Grab the yarn, pull through and keep it onto your crochet hook. So let's do that again. So just go to the next one that's available. Once you do the first one the chain will permanently turn over and you just keep gathering just like so. So if you know how to Tunisian you'll know how to crow knit very very easily. So we're just um, just being kind of loose with it. Um, with this particular styling of crow knitting or crow hooking you will notice that you will not have an extreme roll like you would with Tunisian crochet. We're just going to continue to gather. And I think I got my cat's hair all mixed into this thing. You probably have the same problem at home. I want you to go all the way to the very end and just grab like so. So now you'll have what appears to be a coat hanger of all the different stitches. So pretend this is a coat hanger hanging on a rack and now everything is on. So when we come back I'm going to show you how to do the next, very, the next part. It's actually really simple. So to start off with I want you to do a slip knot with a different color of yarn. You might as well do two different colors. That's the whole point of doing this whole concept. There's no point of keeping it the same color. And what I want you to do I just put down the hook just like this. So what I want you to do is that I want you just to slide this to the other side of the hook. Okay. So if you had that big one with the, the plastic wire in between then you will just slide it all the way to the other side. So what I want you to do at this point is that now that you've slid it, turn it like this. And you're thinking to yourself well this string's on the wrong side of the hook. We're not going to play with that string. We're going to play with the brand new one that we're about to put onto the hook. And so let's put it onto the hook. Let's snug it on and then all I want you to do is just reposition into your hands and drag that one through the first loop only. And this would be like Tunisian as well. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to grab the yarn okay, and we're going to pull through the next two loops. So pull through two, pull through two, 
and keep doing that all the way to the end where you only have one loop left on your crochet hook. So keep doing that. And what I could say to you right now, see how this string is getting really loose in the end? Don't worry about it. That is something that you can tighten up in the very next row, but don't worry about it for now. So now we have to use this same color and go back into the direction from which we came. And we want to go into the vertical um, strings that are, are pointing up. And we start off with the very first one. So we don't chain up one, we just immediately stick the hook behind the first vertical, grab the yarn and pull up like so and we want to grab each one of the verticals. Now the advantage is, is that the verticals are a different color than the yarn you're working with so they become very obvious um, which ones are the vertical. And we continue just to collect them again like it's a coat hanger. So one thing that I want to tell you is that every time you turn this crochet hook you want to make sure that you're not going to twist up the strings. Make sure you go right to the very last one that's available. And what I strongly recommend is that once you do your sample count how many stitches that is. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 11 and basically what I wanted to do is when I turn this and when I work on it I want to make sure that I always have 11. So now that we've come all the way back we're now going to switch places again. So we're just going to simply just slide this to the other side of the hook and turn the hook. And so now we're going to be playing with this blue string over here. So let's begin the next row. So we're about to begin the next row. So the easiest way to remember this is that the yarn from one ball will be always on the one side, the other yarn will always be on the other. They never are on the same side. So let's begin. We're going to wrap the yarn grabbing the blue one now because we have slid it down the hook. We've turned our hook. We're going to grab the blue string right now and just pull through one loop only. This is very much like Tunisian and so we're going to grab the yarn again and pull through the next two and keep pulling through two all the way back. So to simplify basically with one string you are going like a typewriter. You're going there and back and then turn your hook. You're going to grab the other string and go there and back and turn your hook. Okay, so here we go. We've come all the way back. We could tighten the string right now, but there's no point. We can do it in the next round. We're simply just going to come behind the first vertical. This is not the first one. This one that's popping out, it's the second one over. And we just go in behind and grab the new yarn, like so. And so this is, it becomes really easy. So what's going to happen in this sample is that one side is going to look more subdued like the beachy colors that the yarn is and the other one's going to look like tropical fruit punch. So if you had like dishcloth uh, cotton yarn you could actually have a dishcloth that both sides look completely different in color wise from each other. Make sure you go all the way to the end and remember you can actually see that end one because the color is different. And remember 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 11 and now that you have everything on your hook again you're simply just going to turn your project. Now I'm just going to slide it first and then I'm going to turn and when I turned it this time I saw where the strings are coming off from the side of the of the studio here so I wanted to make sure that my strings are not tangling with each other. So let's begin your next round. So to begin this round again we simply just grab the new yarn and pull through the first loop only. And now let's grab the yarn again and pull through two and two and go all the way back. So that's pretty easy stuff, right? Okay, so now that we're all the way back we could tighten up this one but I'm saying not to bother. Just immediately start collecting again and using that same string and going back in the direction from what you just came. So the yarn that you picked up um, on the one side will always be returned back to the same side from where you picked it up if you want to remember it that way as well. And using the variegated yarn with this concept actually looks really interesting as well. So now that we picked up everything again you could count it 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 11. Let's slide and turn. 
and see this is where you can tighten it back up. So to start your next round, so we just pull through the first loop only and then pull through the next two. And keep doing that all the way down. Now in Tunisian crochet when we go to finish off a project like this, the direction going across, not in this direction, but when we go back in the other one is the actual completion of a stitch. So you'll see how you have these massive gaps right now. So it's in this direction for which we have to go back in order to finalize it. So let me finalize off this row one more time and we're just coming in behind and just grabbing. So once you can get your technique of going back and forth and, and switching it and sliding it down your hook, <laughs> I make it sound really complicated, but once you can get the rhythm, it goes really quickly. And it's a project that you could almost like do a headband, have double sided. Um, headband one color being predominantly on one side and let's examine our work after I get to the end of here because now that I'm collecting everything again this is where I would switch my yarn back by sliding it down the hook. So let me slide first. So we now are ready for the new color so we're going to slide and turn. So one side of the project looks very tropical. You can see the blues and etc and the other side looks more beachy in that sense. So it becomes really quite interesting when you're going to work with this. So let's uh, learn how to bind off next and let's do that right away. Okay so I promised you we're going to learn how to bind off. Remember if you wanted to change the colors at any point you can do it at any time as well. So to bind off we're just going to start as normal and we're just going to go through the first loop and then go to the twos all the way back. Like so go through two two twos all the way back and remember I said it's the other direction because you'll end up with a gapping space if you finish it off at this point. So you end up with these gaps. So to finish this off we just we do want to tighten this one down. We simply just want to slide behind the first vertical, grab the yarn and pull through both. Okay let me do that again. So into the next one, grab the yarn and pull through both. And what we're doing is a bind off just like so. If you've uh, just learned entrelac crochet, I've just taught that uh, on our channel last week. This is the same concept as if you were binding off for doing each one of the individual squares. So what's happening now is that we're just finalizing it. So you can see that you would have the big gaps if you didn't. But once you did this final one, you can see it all filled in just perfectly. And so what you want to just do, use your fastening off techniques uh, with your yarn and just tie it off and just weave in your ends either with the darning needle or etc. And voila, you would have an amazing project at the end of this. So let me just review on how I did my little sample because you may want to do a border. Now on this sample here, because you are doing essentially a single crochet, basically when you work down the side of one of these, so if you come down the one side, you will notice that it'll be very easy for you because you are going in that. So to do this, what I would do is that I've just bind and bound off on the one side. So all I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to go down the side for a single crochet as I normally would. Every time I go into something, I want to make sure I grab at least two strings, at least two strings. If you grab one then it will be very loosey goosey. And you just keep working yourself down the rows as you go. When you get to the end, here is the, the starting one. When you get to the corner just put in three single crochets and that will help you turn the corner if you want to. And now you'll be going along the bottom. So essentially you're just going to have going. You're going to see that there is a beautiful stitch work because I had you turn over the original chain. So you'll have two stitches to go into or two loops which you should. Okay and you just go into both loops or, or one stitch. I'm just putting down my, my straggler just on top of it so it can just get woven right into spot or stitched right into spot. And you just continue to go around using the same color. And if you just go on a consistent uh, basis, so if you put two and stitches in by accident into one, you'll notice that pretty obviously. But if you just stretch it out, you can see how everything is working together as you go along. When you get back to the starting corner, just slip, uh, just slip stitch it to the final or the very beginning one that you started off with when you started going around. 
just like so and just trim off your ends and just grab a darning needle at this point and just weave in the loose ends that you have left in order to really secure it into position. So, I'm so on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd, thank you so much for joining me today. We hope that you found it informative to learn how to use a crow hook or a crow knitting hook depending on what you want to call it. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. We'll see ya.